Rub up your engines! All right, here's a car that's gonna make me eat my own words. It's a 2007 Chevy Impella with 470,000 miles on it, and it's still going strong. And no, it hasn't had a million dollars of work done to it. But this Impella from his father for three grand with 160,000 miles on it. He's put another 300,000 on it. And it doesn't sound like that. That's a local fart mobile here. We're gonna go through this thing and see how the heck did it last so long. Obviously maintenance was done. It still looks okay. We'll check under the hood. Yeah, that's broken, but I mean, hey, we'll pull on the whole thing. In we go. And, yes, it is a 3500 V6. They can be very dependable engines. I'm not arguing that. But here's the oddest thing on earth. These are the toys for crappy automatic transmissions. But, even though this thing's got 460,000 miles on it, it still shifts good. Now, he bought it from his father, and this is also going to shock you. The transmission fluid has never, ever been changed. I certainly would advise changing it now. You'd be tempting fate. As we look around here, it was made in Canada. I do have to say the Canadians do a very good job of putting them together. I mean, all this mileage, how does it start? Starts right up. Doesn't really shake all that bad. We'll put it in gear, see what happens. You get a little roll, but I mean, really, it's got 460,000 miles on it. That's not bad at all. And yes, the AC still works. Now the owner was honest with me, said when his father had it, the second year he had it, he had like 40,000 miles on it. The head gasket blew. GM replaced the head gasket completely free. Well, they certainly did a good job putting it back together because that was like 420,000 miles ago, and it's still running. And that's dirty, but it's coming from Missouri. Kind of a long way. They just saw the road there. They did have to replace the alternator recently, as you can see. That's brand new. Now, interestingly enough, this is a flex fuel vehicle, and the owner does switch back and forth and he hasn't had any problems with it. This is a Repo Man car, just like in a movie. It handles radioactive materials in the trunk. Now, it's not glowing like the Repo Man car. You see, it's got plywood under there, and it certainly isn't a time machine like the Repo Man car. He handles these 50-pound containers of radioactive isotopes for cancer treatments on animals. So he does have a radioactive trunk, <laughs> just like in Repo Man. And he's worried that all the weight, because he carries a bunch of them, is going to knock it off. But it's still going down the road. Who knows? Maybe the radioactivity is the reason this thing is still going 460,000 miles later. Maybe it's a newly evolved type of shot. Way. I don't know. Now, of course, the reason it's heavy is because they got to line it with lead. This trunk doesn't glow because the packages are lined with lead, but lead's heavy and it's still going down the road. Now, granted, this window just fell down. He's got a piece of cardboard holding it up, but this old Impala, it's still leaping along down the road. Let's put the scan tool on it. Now, while the outthink tool is setting itself up, we must realize one thing but it means a lot. He drives this thing 530 miles a day. Highway driving is equivalent to 10% city driving. He got from his father with 160 on it, so he put another 300,000 miles on it, but if he did it all on the highway, that's equivalent to about 30,000 miles. So now things are starting to become clear. Well, we got a few coats, it's an old car. First, we'll look at the body. What's the code for that? Recirculation position, command circuit actuator stuck. So what? It still blows cold. Check the next one. It says the tire pressure sensors aren't working right. Well, no duh on that one. They got batteries in them. You know what happens after time? The batteries go bad. If you want to change them all out, spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars taking the tires apart, putting new sensors in, reprogram them, go right ahead. Tire pressure gauges cost five, ten dollars. Get a gauge. Don't throw your money away on an old thing like this. We don't really care about that either. EVAP system, large leak detected. Might need a gas cap, something like that it still runs perfectly fine old car like this who cares it's still running down the road now let's look at the data we'll go to read data stream and start it up look at the engine data remember blue is good it's got bad data it'll be a different color oh my god the evaporative emissions vent control cylinder is not venting well, that's probably the thing. It's probably stuck. It says it's got a large leak, so that probably means the thing's stuck open. 
That's probably what it is, but it runs good enough. No one cares. I realized this is a flex fuel car. So, it's got another fuel. And he runs it on flex fuel. Not bad for an old car. Look, the long-term fuel trim is almost zero. 0 0.781. Oh, we'll look at a little more. No surprise that your spark advance moves around a little. It's, it's an old car with a worn engine. And really, for a car this size of its age, he gets about 25 miles a gallon when he uses gasoline. When he uses ethanol, the E85, he only gets 20 miles a gallon. Always keep that in mind. Ethanol has less British thermal units than gasoline, so it gets worse gas mods. That's just how they go. But on the behalf of this car, he's running on both regular gasoline and ethanol and it still works perfectly fine so that system is still working and adjusting the engine so that it runs good look at some of the transmission data it's not moving so the output zero it's not slipping that's good check out misfire data the injector circuits are all fine were there any misfires where they had to disable the injector no, 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 no. Not for all six cylinders. Here's all the misfires. Zero, 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 zero. Quite impressive for a car with 460,000 miles on it. Hey, this is going to make me eat my words. Although they are highway mileage. Let's take that into consideration now. The bright lights are stuck on all the time. But what the heck? All the better to see you with when you're driving. <laughs> and here we go, up the hill. Hey, you still got impressive power in it? You can have a little oversteer on an old car like this. You know, he does have a tendency eating up wheel bearings. They always were kind of weak on this. And of course, wheel bearings are going to wear out faster as the suspension system gets worn. Things aren't perfectly aligned. And if you're off just a few thousandths of an inch, guess what? It's going to wear the wheel bearings because they're sitting a little bit cockeyed and they're spinning thousands of times every minute. So. Eventually, the wheel bearings go out, and he's had to replace it a few times. Now, the brakes still work decent. Yeah, the struts are worn. You can hear groaning and creaking, but hey, you'd groan and creak if you had 460,000 miles on you, too. Let's take it to the little drag strip here, see if it's got anything left in this engine. Still handles in the curves. It's not falling apart. Here we come to the little drag strip. Let's see how this thing goes. I can hear a few things rattling, but here we go. All right, not a rocket ship, but... Still got some decent pickup, you know? And the transmission's not clunking either. Yeah, you hear things bopping up and down when you hit things, but really, look, I don't even have my hands on the wheel. It's going pretty straight. <laughs> I'm impressed, smooth running car. Now, it still has the original water pump, the original radiator, it's still going. Now, he admits the rear main Sealy engine leaks a little bit of oil. It doesn't burn off, but it leaks a little bit of oil. And the power steering pump leaks a bit of oil too, so he has to add a little here and there. For this age, it makes me wonder, why couldn't GM make them all like this? Was this a once in a universe Impala that they made here? I don't know, it's got me kind of wondering. I mean, it looks like a normal ghost stock Impala. It doesn't seem to have any alien markings on it, although there are some scratches on the bumper here. Maybe E.T. was trying to get out, scratch his way out, I don't know. So proving that I'm an honest man, here it is, the Impala with 460,000 miles that the man bought from his father for three grand with 160,000 miles. So 300,000 miles and he spent $3,000. Boy, that's a pretty good deal, you know? <laughs> You're not gonna get deals like that all that often. Just remember though, he does drive 500 something miles a day on the highway. But then again, he's got lead lined containers in the trunk. So he's carrying some weight too, you know? I gotta say, I'm shocked. Anybody else has something like this? Bring it on over and let me check it out because this one has blown me away. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Jordan Cardwell 1999 says, I got a 1997 Ford Ranger. It revs up when I don't give it gas. It still revs up after I put the clutch in. What could be the problem? Generally just carbon up. When I was a young mechanic, they had carburetors and we tuned up a car, we would clean the carburetor. Today everything's fuel injected. People think, oh, you don't have to do anything. Eh, no, you do have to do things. The throttle can carbon up. So you take the air filter off and the air duct and get to the throttle. You can buy spray throttle. I have a video, make your car run 
better with the little spray cleaner, Scotty. Watch that. It shows how you can easily clean it yourself. You don't have to do it that often, maybe once every couple, three years. It's not that hard to do because when the carbon builds up on a throttle plate, it'll stick. Then it sticks and it revs high and then it on sticks. Cleaning it generally will fix it. Now, if it happens every single time and it's not just sticking throttle, you could have a vacuum leak. Listen under the hood, you hear a sucking sound, find out if one of the hoses, it's a 97. A lot of times stupid vacuum hoses will rot or fall off. Check for that too. It could easily be a vacuum on it's falling off. As old as this, it's a good idea to clean your throttle with throttle spray cleaner. That is going to make it stick and idle real high too. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.